what happens. Now I need two times. Three and one and one. What if I had put the coordinate axis to two points? Coordinates are total temperature, right? So let's do it to two points, right? Put the coordinates here. And here. From our initial position. There is a bit of a skull that x prime. And that's y prime. The exact same problem starting with this. We'll start out with the perpendicular angle. If I do that on the right here, just make the double check, right? After deformation, I'll have to stick with my color scheme here. What's the point? These stay perpendicular, okay? But the exact same problem by just having a different pair of reference lines, the final state, those lines aren't perpendicular anymore. Let me redraw that with high help without all that junky thing. Get rid of the inside thing. Let's just draw that top. I'll show you what I mean. This is A prime. Those stay perpendicular. A2, which is just simply putting the coordinates in a fixed position. <coughs> that's there, and that's there, H2. Okay. No angular change, big angular change. Exact same coordinate. Uh, point of that is that is, is the point of the quantity is directionally dependent. The, the, quanti the, the physical quantity, the elongation strain, and these are elongated too, right? These are both stretched. You've got the lengthened, whereas this one's shortened, that one's lengthened. But there's also an angular change in there. And that's directionally dependent. Now, how would you how would you represent that? Well, Here's an example. X, Y. There is a vector V. We would represent vector V by its component form VX, X hat plus VY, Y hat in that coordinate system. If I used a different coordinate system, and I'll show you what this one is, this guy, x, y, I'll have a new set of components, right? There's a vx component there and a vy component there. So under this this vx prime x hat x hat prime plus vy prime prime v. That's the exact same vector. The only thing that changed was those two quantities, the components. So maybe the first one was 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 one one. The second one might be. Probably not right. I can't see quadratic form in my head. Sure. But you get the point. See, these numbers are the same. They, they add up to the same vector. But just the choice of coordinate system changes those values. This is the same kind of thing, but it's no, not a vector now. It's got something else buried in it. And you can represent this is a this representation of a vector. 1, 1, or 2, 1, let me move that, can be thought of as a 2 by 1 matrix. Same way, these can be represented as a matrix quantity, so that in the x system, the 
first reference system. Steam. I'm not going to get too fancy here. It's just EX, EY, and the other term, shear strain. Sorry, you right whereas these quantities have finite values. But in the other reference frame, in the green reference frame, E equals E something, E something, gamma, one. Okay, I'm just going to simplify here. Gamma, they're actually the same quantity. The shear strength. These represent the angular changes, and those represent the elongation. It's exactly the same numbering system, different component representation of the same quantity, but it's no longer a vector. You can think of this as a pair of vectors, a pair of vector systems that are linked. Uh, and it's directionally dependent. So if you just consider rotating the coordinate axis, around this position, there is a systematic variation of the quantity. So it's predictable. It's like if you rotate that to 90 degrees, you come right back to where you started from. Right? So every 90 degrees, the thing repeats itself. I see some people shaking their heads over here. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's another way to write. OK, so the point of this, remember I said a tensor was a quantity that was related to two vectors. This is an illustration of the quantity is not a vector because in its component form, in two dimensions, it takes a matrix representation. But it also is directionally dependent. And it actually obeys the same rules of vector transformation. <coughs> it's just you have to transform two vectors instead of one. Does that sound like nonsense? But that's what it amounts to. So your representation takes a higher order quantity. Uh, if it was a three dimension, it would be three by three. Uh, we won't talk about three dimensional matrices. Let's not worry about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. How am I doing on time? Oh, yeah, time. Okay. There's a much better way to visualize this qualitatively with my help. Let's leave that one for now.